Canada used to be considered a Christian nation, but it appears as though we've become more of a pluralistic society featuring many different religions and cultures. To talk more about it is Professor Irving Hexham, Professor of Religious Studies at the University of Calgary. He's also the author of the book entitled Encountering World Religions. Irving, welcome to Bridge City News. Thank you very much for having me on the program. Now, do you believe each culture and every human being has a built-in longing for the divine? I think they do. And this is the point that's made by St. Augustine in his confessions. My heart finds no rest until it finds its rest in thee. That's what Augustine said of God himself when he was uh, a seeker. Now, many years ago, I had the opportunity to interview a monk at a Buddhist temple just outside of Toronto, Venerable Rathanasiri. He was telling me that Buddhism is more of a philosophy than a religion. Now, would you agree with that? I think, yes, in terms of Buddhism, um, what can I say, Buddhism proper, the hard core of Buddhism, um, what one's got with Buddhism, and you have it with many religions, is that there is the central teachings and the central practice of the religion, and then there's the popular uh, expression of it. So with the monks and, and people who are totally devoted to Buddhist philosophy, then it's very much a philosophy, although a philosophy with very strong religious elements. For ordinary people, it may be very different. Um, there, there can be a lot of even gods within uh, the daily worship of the ordinary Buddhist. But for true Buddhism, uh, the idea of having a god that's in any way important is anathema. I mean, God is unimportant to their existence because God doesn't exist. I mean, there is no such thing as a God for the Buddhist. So outside of God and reincarnation, which the Buddhists uh, firmly believe in, what are some of the other fundamental differences between Christianity and Buddhism? Well, I think that the biggest one is the fact that in Christianity, we talk about people having souls. And you find that in many religious tradition. And by soul, we mean that there's the essence of the person and that there's this essence of a person continues in the Hindu traditions. It tri transmigrates to another body. In Christianity, Judaism and Islam, uh, it goes to heaven. But there's this essence, which is the person. In Buddhism, the very idea of a person is a wrong way of thinking about life. There is no person. That's the central doctrine, just as there is no real world, because everything is an illusion. And so you've got to come to the realization that there is no self in reality. The fact that we think there's a self, this is illusory, and we've got to learn to overcome that. And that may take many, many uh, centuries because the consciousness, which makes us believe that there's a self, it transmigrates to other um, existences throughout time. And it's breaking this chain of transmigration and moving on uh, of reincarnation uh, that you've got to do. That's the central point of Buddhism. And what happens then? Well, we really don't know. The Buddha said, um, where does the flame of a candle go when you blow it out? And his disciples, of course, uh, wondered about that. And he said, well, you know, this is what nirvana is. This is what we're going to achieve. Um, we're going to lose this sense of um, our personhood because there is no self and we've got to get beyond that. And everything that goes with the self in terms of consciousness of the world and our uh, clinging, clinging to this world, wanting to continue our existence, that's uh, illusory. And we've got to break that chain of uh, false impressions. So, Irving, any thoughts on how a Christian can befriend a Buddhist and engage in a conversation on spiritual issues? Yeah, well, I think, um, as with all other religions, I don't think it's just a Buddhist, the first thing one's got to do is to simply befriend them. And we've got to remember that in Christian teaching, all human beings are made in the image of God. So we've all got a, a God-centered life in a, a certain respect. God made us, and he made us... Um, essentially the same. There is this, as we, we started out saying, there's this inner um, sense of the divine that causes people to seek God or to seek some sort of solution to what life is really all about. And that, that's 
uh, the starting point. So in the first instance, I think one's got to, when you meet people of other faiths, one's got to realize that they are very much like you and like me. And we've got to befriend them as people. And we've also got to realize, I think, when we talk about people belonging to other religions and in our increasingly pluralistic society, many people come to Canada uh, from other places with different religious backgrounds, as they have done, in fact, throughout Canadian history. And they bring the baggage of their religion with them. Uh, if their mother and father were Jewish, they're Jewish. If they were Buddhist, they're Buddhist. Uh, if they were Hindu, they're Hindu. If they were Muslim, Muslim, Jew, you know, you go on like this. But the fact is that many of these people are simply uh, secular. They're, they're very much like the ordinary person, the ordinary Canadian who comes from a Christian background that really doesn't practice their religion except for Christmas and for uh, certain celebrations. And most people belonging to other religions, possibly with the exception of Muslims, who tend to be a little bit uh, more um, practicing in terms of their commitment. But most other people, the religion is, is something that's there and it's something that they're aware of. And if they're pushed on it, it's important to them. But in daily practice, they're very secular. They're just like the average uh, Canadian neighbor who came from a Christian background, but never goes near a church, except maybe when they want to get married, or maybe they have a child and they think, well, really, granddad would like the, the baby to be baptized, we better get it baptized. And this is the way, this is the level of practice of many other people belonging to different faiths. I have some friends in the greater Toronto area who refer to themselves as Christian Buddhists. Now, is there such a thing? I think in terms of Buddhism, this is a possibility to call yourself that. I don't think you can really call yourself a Christian Muslim or a Christian Hindu. Uh, but with Buddhism, because it's a philosophy about the nature of life, um, you can sort of incorporate things together in a, in a way that makes a certain amount of sense. I don't think it actually holds in terms of the basic teachings of either Christianity or Buddhism. But there is an overlap, let us put it like that, where they're both talking about very different things, about a very different view of reality. And to be a, a real Buddhist, to take Buddhism really seriously, um, you can't be a Christian Buddhist because Christianity believes that there is a person and Buddhist believes there isn't a person. So, you know, that's totally contradictory. Uh, and yet, you know, Buddhists can be very accommodating. Let's put it like that. Can you explain what the basic beliefs are of Hinduism? And is it true that they worship more than one god? Like maybe even thousands of gods? <laughs> this is uh, the, probably the most difficult thing to teach uh, in a university. When you teach an introductory course to world religions and one starts talking about the Hindu tradition. Um, because Hinduism is a vast amalgam of beliefs and practices. And within it, there can be many different views. You can be a Hindu and a good Hindu and be an atheist. You can be a Hindu and you can believe in one God. You can be a Hindu and you can believe in millions of gods. And they all sit together within this general framework. Being a Hindu um, traditionally has been much more of an ethnic reality than of a religious reality. It, it's you're born in India, you're born into the Hindu tradition, you're a Hindu. But in terms of belief systems, um, it's a very multiplicity uh, gone wild, really, because um, Hindus can believe so many things, one can't really generalize. Yet, having said that, in terms of uh, the Hindu tradition in Canada, Many of the people who come here are Hindus in terms of their family practices, the holidays they hold and things like this, and also in terms of their belief. And the probably the dominant belief of more uh, educated Hindus would be something that's called Vedanta. And that's a particular type of philosophy which allows for the existence of a godlike being um, and 
for people to have souls and to have communication with this God. And it, it can be uh, very monotheistic. But then you can have also sorts of other gods who can either be gods in their own right or can be um, expressions of the one reality, Brahman. So um, you name it and you can believe it within the Hindu tradition. Why do Hindus revere the cow so much? Um, this is a good question. Uh, this is because not only the cow, the cow is an expression of the divine. And the cow also provides all sorts of other things for us, like milk, and it helps us. It, it varies. I mean, many Hindus really don't revere the cow. It, it's much more in India where the cow is very much revered. But the cow is seen as a, a giver of life. And uh, this comes through the milk and things like that. And most Hindus would not eat uh, meat. Um, they would be vegetarian. And so uh, they live alongside the cow. Um, and also one's got to remember within the Hindu tradition, um, very much you have the transmigration of the soul and the soul moves from one body to the next at death. And uh, you can be reborn as a cow. You can be reborn as many things. And so depending on the strictness of the tradition, and this would be true within the Buddhist tradition as well, um, you really have to have great respect for animals and other creatures because, you know, you may end up being one in the future. And so uh, you've got you ought to treat them well. Now, in practice, these things don't always work that way. Um, in practice, there are animals that Hindus don't like and there are they can treat animals badly uh, or they can treat them well. But uh, in theory, um, we can all end up being an animal and therefore we ought to um, watch how we treat them. So, Irving, what are some of the commonalities between Islam and Christianity? Did it all begin with Isaac and Ishmael? Well, it all begins with Abraham, really. I, I would call them Abrahamic religions. Uh, and that would mean that initially you have Abraham, the patriarch. And from Abraham, you get um, the Jewish tradition coming forward as the first major tradition, uh, believing very much in one God and in this God being the creator of this world and of God creating a covenant with human beings. And these are the shared beliefs. And through history, uh, but particularly the history recorded in the Hebrew Bible, we see how the Jewish people responded to this revelation of God. And this revelation of God develops over time until we get down to the time of Christ. And then at the time of Christ, uh, a major transition takes place both within the Jewish tradition and outside of it in terms of the development of Christianity. Um, a lot of Christians think that um, when we talk about Judaism, we're talking about the Old Testament and the beliefs of the Old Testament. But the Jewish tradition be develops way beyond that. Um, Judaism really dates from the same time as what we know as Judaism, as it's practiced today. Let me be very clear on this in terms of the synagogue and uh, how Judaism develops. Uh, it developed alongside of and in interaction with Christianity. And then in the seventh century AD, you get the rise of Islam. And Islam draws very much on the Jewish tradition, very much on the prophetic tradition found in the Hebrew Bible. But also it draws to a large extent on certain Christian teachings. So you find Mary and Joseph and people like this within the um, Muslim tradition. And Muslims have normally great respect for Jesus as a prophet. But they don't believe that Jesus is actually the incarnation of God. You know, it's funny. And an imam that I interviewed many years ago as well, to expand on your point a little bit, he mentioned to me in the Quran that Jesus is mentioned even more times than Muhammad. Yes, I think that's true. I've heard someone say that. I've never checked it out, actually. Uh, but I have heard Muslims say that because um, Muhammad is the spokesperson through which the Quran was revealed to mankind. And um, Muslims don't believe that, as some Christians sometimes mistakenly think, that Muhammad wrote the Quran. They believe that God spoke through Muhammad and the words which he spoke were written down by his followers and they became the Quran. 
And therefore, the Quran is the direct word of God, whereas the Hebrew prophets and the Christian teachers initially were inspired by God. So we know in, in the New Testament that there's a difference between the writings of Peter and Paul and James. They've all got their own style. And we take that into account and we attribute it to the fact that God inspired them. His spirit spoke through them, but they spoke their own words. Um, this isn't the case with Muhammad. Muhammad sp spoke, he recited the, the word of God, uh, and it was God speaking through him. It wasn't anything to do with him whatsoever. And then uh, within the Islamic tradition, um, you have a, another set of um, sources called the Hadith, which tell us all about Muhammad and what Muhammad said and did. And this provides a model for Muslims. So the Hadith provides a model and the Hadith provides um, means of interpreting the Quran. But the Quran is not like uh, the Bible is. It's, it's not a, a historical document in the sense that men had something to do with it. It's believed by Muslims to be absolutely pure revelation directly from God. Dr. Irving Hexham, Professor of Religious Studies at the University of Calgary and author of Encountering World Religions. Thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you very much indeed. On behalf of all of us here at PCN, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless, and thanks so much for watching.